Your life is wonderful. She has a lot of friends, she has many activities, but when you think about your future, it's every step, every day step, you're scary. Mothers never show to children how hard for them to be here. They left husbands, they left everything in Ukraine. The first people here came in April or May, right? Comes next May, they will have to pack their bags and go back. But the question is, go back where? In Ukraine, the life was perfect because it was calm, uh, it was comfortable, and all my small uh, girls' family were together. We live near the sea in Odessa, and we have something like a picnic um, at the beach. It is my mom, my daughter. It was 24 of February. I was my daughter was in Odessa. My husband visited his relatives in Mariupol. And at uh, 5 a.m. I heard that uh, some, some explosion again and again, again and again. And then I take my phone and I see that my friends from Kharkiv and from Mariupol, from Kherson, chat that uh, the war was started. Breaking news after the U.S. warned all day of a full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine that it was imminent. Vladimir Looks like the darkest day has come to pass following this speech by Vladimir Putin. Explosions were seen and heard in cities across the country. It was very scary. Uh, I know that I uh, pregnant when it was uh, February 24 when the war was started. It is the first day of war. I did the test and I see the results when I package my luggage. One of the beautiful day and one of the worst day in our life. It was a very uh, hard decision to left your home, your country, your relatives. Uh, and I had to leave because I had to survive and uh, to give a new life. Klein Life is, is about 50 years old. It's, it's opened in 1975, and uh, it, it opened as a Jewish community center. And it's still official, it's a Jewish community center, but you know, we are much more of a social service agency at this point. I was born in Kharkov, in Ukraine, when, uh, when it was still a part of the Soviet Union. And uh, I came here in, in 1989 as a, a refugee. I'm uh, from rostov on from Russia. I was born in rostov on I came in 1997, October 31st. They brought us to Klein Life. This neighborhood is interesting because now it has the highest concentration of immigrants in the, in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, about 40% of people who live around here are immigrants. Uh, this building is kind of, it's, it's, real, it's real community center. I like um, uh, to tell people this is uh, uh, like a, a real castle for children. Every evening we have around 700 children in the building. Aha, uh -huh, do not run. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so when first refugees, when first mothers uh, came, it was May, May 2022, it was a group of mothers with children. And I got idea, suddenly I got idea, and I, and I came to Andre's office and I told him, can we take these children for free for camp, for summer camp? 
I called my board and I said, I said, guys, you know, this is not, this is not really kind of a Jewish program, but you know, here is the refugees and uh, they're coming and we need to do something for them. And I said, you know, how about raising $40,000? So lo and behold, we raised, we raised about 130,000. So we were able to take over 60 kids. I wanted to see kids behaving like kids because when they when they came in they were like really in a rough shape when kids were playing outside and the plane would take off the children would do this and then hit the ground which was a really tough thing to, to see so the kids here identify as refugees from Ukraine and most recently there are a couple kids who came here from Israel we're doing a therapeutic art group um, and today we're going to be making peace signs with the kids and exploring what peace means to them. This For my daughter, adaptation was hard and she's a very uh, smart girl. <laughs> she understands all. We have relatives from Russia and uh, she can't uh, understand what's going on and uh, why her father um, not with us. Why mom crying all the time. It was hard and uh, she was in stress. And when we came here, uh, she said it is a, a, like a small part of Ukraine. It is my like second home. I like all girls, but Oyeva, it's a special girl. She's a so, so kind girl, very talented. I so like to be here, it's so fun at the stage. Where are the magicians? Где водятся волшебники? Где водятся волшебники? Фантазия к твоих. С кем водятся волшебники? It is very wonderful because uh, at this very difficult time for for our family and for Ukraine, uh, you're very happy when your child is happy. Жди, жди твою маму. Киска, привет! Ты тоже в этой штуке? Привет! Ты тоже Жив... в этой штуке? Привет! Меня снимают. Клин Лайф — это как маленький island of peace and happy and childhood for, for us. So I'm trying to give her in this condition the best. Many, many Ukrainians, tens of thousands, uh, were able to utilize the United for Ukraine uh, program in order to enter the United States with parole. Most of those individuals were admitted for two-year periods of stay. Now the kids have been to school for, for two years, right? So they started kind of, they're speaking English, they're making friends, and now you take them and, and, and telling them, you know, go back. Maria, she has a more difficult story because she didn't get you for you because she came with a visa. She came like pregnant woman. The individuals that had a visa at the time that the war started were able to come to the United States much faster than those who eventually needed to wait for the United for Ukraine program. The downside to having a visa is that with a tourist visa, you are not authorized to work in the United States. Tourist, uh don't have any uh, social security, work permit. I can't attend uh, any job. I don't have any driver license. Uh, even in this moment, after a tourist visa, one of the lawyers said to me that only you have a, only one way to go to student visa. I said that I don't have a money to pay for every day and I have an infant, how I can to attend. 
uh, but I had to do it. My grandma helped me when I had to go to uh, my study. She is sitting with my baby. Ukraine is designated for temporary protected status. The U.S. government has extended the dates. So temporary protected status for Ukrainians ends on April 19th of 2025. At least at this juncture, TPS seems to be the de facto extension of the United for Ukraine program. It's likely that the designation for Ukraine will be extended certainly until the war is over and probably even for a minimum period of 18 months after the war is over in order to allow Ukraine an opportunity to rebuild. This moment I applied to TPS and I waited this status. I hope that uh, we receive it in future and I can to go to the um, job. If I can't uh, join to TPS, um, I think I, had, I will have to leave here yes, because life is too, um, too hard and um, a lot of money for rents, for for student payments, for you know, it's not easy our life here. Most Ukrainians that I know are very, very proud people that had wonderful, decent lives in Ukraine before the war. Um, so many individuals do want to go back to Ukraine at some point. They they still have family there, uh, businesses, uh, and other ties to the country. Other Ukrainians aren't, you know, hopeful that they will be able to spend the rest of their life uh, in a safe environment in, in Ukraine, even if the war is over. You want to go home, you want to roll the day uh, when everything was, was good and you have a peace life. Your life is perfect, I think, for for child, but she still wants to go home. We can do it, you know, we want to go home. If Odessa uh, still, still will be Ukrainian city, we go home and the war will end.